is checked and it slides out to center ice. Wenslop backhands it into the Grand Rapids bench and we played 58 seconds, no score. The most explosive team in the state. Hey, Dale. Rolls over 6.9 goals for average. Monday. Look at their leading scores. On the blue line there, you got One it. One 86, Godsman 53 in height, or 63 in height, 52. What a scoring machine. It's interesting that Bill Lund is in the longest scoring slump of his career. He has not scored a goal in his last three games, the two tournament games and the section final. Dean Blaze told me, that he hasn't talked to Lund about it. None of his teammates have talked to Lund. Bill Lund's well aware that he has to come up big tonight. Well, that's something that's probably worrying Grand Rapids. Here's Wenslop keeping it in. A shot deflected. And Houston had to be alert there. Nielsen now gets it ahead at center ice. Here's a shot from Fairchild, the overtime hero yesterday. And now Wenslop clears it out. Tony Retka fires it in. Both teams make changes. Out comes Jason Wenslop. His cousin also on the team, Todd Wenslop, fires it in. After it, there is Huglin in the corner. Huglin bottled up, and Mike Earhart takes it. Number 11, Earhart. Up ahead on left wing. Into the center ice area for Galatz. His shot right on. Rebound, here's Earhart marching in. Backhands it through the goal crease. Good pace to start this game, and that's what we expected from two outstanding teams. So true, real quick pace. Very good skating club, both of them. Al couldn't keep it in, now fires it in, and his teammates will have to check up at the blue line. Now they're back in the four check. At the line, kept in, there's a shot, rebound, McDonald swiped at it, and play whistled down as Brian Knobs knocked down McDonald after Houston made the save. There's a break in the action, we'll be right McDonald there. swiping at the rebound. Didn't put it away because of Chad Houston making two fine saves. The key of this game could be the defense of Rosa. They move the puck out real well, and they stay in that blue line and get the shots on the net. They've got to be watched closely. A lot of jostling in that face-off circle before Marinucci got the draw away from Bill Lund, and the puck slides out to center ice. Wenslop put it on the stick of Beltier, and here comes Marinucci. Inside the line, he can't beat the defenseman. Knocked down, Gotsman fell down as he tried to leap over a man. Marinucci now feeds it back to Beltier. Beltier clears it back in. There's Marinucci behind the net. Marinucci still with it, a shot kicked out by Butler, and Gotsman clears away the rebound. Chris Gotsman in his own zone. Pressure from Grand Rapids. There's a shot rolling wide of the goal. Off the boards ahead to Lund to the blue line. Kept in by Worley. Wrapped around by Cousy. On the far side, Marinucci takes a look. Dumps it back in the corner. And the Indians now will complete a line change and allow Rozo to come out. Chris Heights at center ice. Heights with a long shot. Houston got his toe on it. Rebound. Gotsman took a swipe at it. Adam Roy now clears it behind the goal. And Tony Retka has it. Up ahead on the right wing. And a big hit there by Gunderson. And we've seen him do that a lot over the past three days. Dana Gunderson throws the good checks. He has great timing on that puck area. And that was on one of the big scorers, Nielsen. Gunderson hits Nielsen again. Puck loose in front. Houston down, and he makes the save and covers up. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Line for Rozo, he gets a shot away and right in front. Look at Headland fighting off a check, getting a rebound, and Houston makes his second save from close in. That one on Headland, one earlier on McDonald. Score to, still 0 0. From the faceoff, Howe with the shot. It's blocked. Howe goes low, centers it in front, and Hansen was decked in front of the net. Back it comes to Dale One. Winding up, the shot is blocked as Nielsen went sprawling. Now cleared outside the line. Fired back in by Howe. Lead pass at center, broken up by Gunderson. He has a sore hand, could not shoot at all last night. And they feel he might be able to get off the odd wrist shot tonight, but Gunderson not playing at 100%. Icing the call against Grand Rapids. We've played four minutes, 27 seconds of the opening period. We talked about the scoring power of Rozo, but Grand Rapids, no slouch in that department. Look at those leaders, and they had a 6.25 goals for average. Marinucci, the Iron Range scoring champ, with 64 points. 
followed by Nielsen, 56, and Kuzi. And as we said, Nielsen's got one goal, so he's a dangerous man. He's someone that could break out at any time. And boy, has he got the quick legs. Exceptional okay. speed. Face off to the left of goaltender Chad Hewson. Earhart in on the draw for Grand Rapids against McDonald. Puck comes back to the point. Wensloff into Gunnarsson. There's a shot, and it deflected wide of the goal. Hewson was going one way, and the puck went the other. Score checked, and now centered out in front. They were looking for Hewlett. It comes back to the point. Slid in by Bufflin. He had two goals last night, number two on the Roseau defense. Now Knobs. Up ahead it goes, and the Indians neatly get it out as to Earhart at center ice to Gallitz. Gallitz into the zone, drops the puck, and hands it to Rozo. Back they come. Hewlett up ahead. McDonald lost it in his skates, and Tom Worley turns. Worley at center ice, just missed his man with the pass. Oh, that was almost a dangerous pass, but it works for Rozo, and here they come. Inside the line, it's Dale Gunderson. Runs in front of the net. Couldn't get the puck in front. Now it's slid to the side of the goal. Beltier around the boards, kept in by Howe. Houston steers to the corner. Gunderson is hit there. One goes after the puck. Dean Blaze also saying maybe all the pressure and all the attention has affected Bill Lund. He's puck cleared into the penalty box area. He's a Mr. Hockey candidate. He's an all-state player, and everybody's telling him he's the best player in this tournament, and maybe the pressure has been affecting him. Well, he's also using his body very well. Look at him throw a check in this instance. He's not afraid to use his body. A stocky fella. Billy Lund's got that scoring touch here. 36 goals in the regular season. Twice this year, he had six-point games. He can rack up the stats. Gotsman. Cross ice pass. Moving up on the play as Heights ahead to Lund. Heights has good speed. Heights trying to break in, and he was taken off the puck. Now on the other side, Wilson broken up. Wilson in turn with the check. And at center ice, it's cleared down in on Jerome Butler. Corey Howe in his own zone. Hands it away, and Wilson missed it. And now here comes Lund. Pass for Heights is intercepted. Gunderson takes a hit from Marinucci, and again the puck hopping away from Lund. Here's Cousy with Wilson, and offside is the call. With the score, Rozo, nothing, Grand Rapids, nothing. This is Hockey 90. So being able to move that puck and use their body. Same thing for Grand Rapids. Some fine checks in the last few days from Nobbs and Beltier. And Rick and Worley have been real good with the puck. Here's Nielsen trying to break into the zone. He's hauled down by Dale Lund. On the far side, kept in by Adam Roy. He clears it behind the goal. Nielsen takes a look and goes after it. Up against Bufflin. They tie it up against the boards. Puck comes loose. Lund sprawls, but it gets it outside the line. Worley fighting for it. Bufflin couldn't get loose. Now it's Fairchild knocked down in the open ice by Jason Wenslaw. Wenslaw. Number nine, back pass, dangerous one. Here's a chance for the Indians. A shot to Nielsen, robbed by Butler. What a stop by Jerome Butler. He's doing it again. Well, Jeff Nielsen shouldn't be stopped at one goal anymore. That was a rocket in the upper corner, and watch this save by Butler with a quick glove. He just grabs that, and there was a lot on that shot. Butler standing there. Good shot by Nielsen. He couldn't put it in a better spot. It was labeled in the upper corner. And just that quick glove of Butler's keeps his game scoreless. The junior goaltender has been outstanding throughout this tournament. Dean Blaze was saying he coaches himself and seems to be doing a pretty good job of it, so we, we let him go. He has been the star goaltender in this tournament. Although, as we've mentioned, Houston of Grand Rapids has the save of the tournament. Murray Howe in his own zone, four check. Here's a loose puck, centered out in front. There's a shot, and it didn't get through as Gallitz took a swipe at it. Good four checking by the Indian. Gunderson takes his man out, and now David McDonald comes up with it. Here comes McDonald. Left side feed, too far for Huglin, and it slides down. Icing is the call. 
With the score, Rozo nothing, Grand Rapids nothing. This is Hockey 90, live from... On your screens, first time since 66. Section 7 and 8 playing for the championship. One thing, Chris, when you look at these clubs, great skating pace, excellent individual skills in both teams. Yet you may have more whistles than you'd expect in this game because they know each other so well. Many of their moves that might fool an ordinary player, players that they don't see too often, these kids have seen for five and six years. They might not go for it. So consequently, you could have more body contact. You could have uh, little shifts that don't work, causing some offsides. And because of the close checking, you may see a lot more icing. Trying to thread that pass through has got to be perfect. This championship matchup is much different than any of the others I've experienced. The uh, more serious uh, preparations for the game uh, in that pregame feature. The kids are very serious. There's no clowning around. There hasn't been much celebrating yet. And the mutual respect these two teams have is almost unparalleled. As Gotsman breaks in, Heights with a shot on goal! And the net knocked off the mooring. Heights signaling a goal, but Houston stood his ground the best he could. Gotsman coming in from the wing actually got checked and that puck came free, but Heights with the excellent speed going to the net got a shot away. Watch Gotsman cut it, cutting in from the right and the puck gets lost here, but Heights quick with his stick, cutting the inside, got a shot away and Houston standing his ground makes another good save and everyone gets knocked into that net and it comes off its moorings. Face off to the left of Houston. Lund wins the draw. There's a shot sliding wide of the goal. Bill Lund picks up the loose puck. He has been watched very closely in this tournament, and that should be pointed out. Marinucci, an outstanding offensive center, will be spending a lot of his time just watching Bill Lund. When we talk about the good young players, Chris. Number nine in defense for Rosa is only a sophomore. Wenslov, and he's had a, a fine tournament for a youngster. He's got great poise. I think it's been the year of the sophomore. There's been so many outstanding sophomores in the tournament. Wenslov gets it ahead to Gotsman. Gotsman can't control it. Wenslov following up, and here he goes, number nine. Get it in, get it in. Good skating defenseman into the zone. A line change for Rozo, so he's by himself. And now Grand Rapids clears it out. Headland up ahead, and there's Wenslov again. He just gets rid of it. I think he'd like to get to the bench now as Headland breaks in. Sharp angle shot. Houston the save, and the rebound is clear. Up it goes to Cousy. Good burst of speed by Cousy with Wilson. Cousy into the zone, puts on the brakes, takes a look, and they score! <laughs> Grand Rapids opens the scoring on a surprise goal. Cousy, with great speed, goes down the outside, stops and whirls and just fires it into the zone towards the net, and just ends up going in the upper corner by a startled Butler. You see Cousy going down the board, getting checked. He stops and he whirls, and he lets the shot go. It hits the foot of his line mate, and it comes off the toe over the head of Butler. Actually, the centerman should, you know, Cousy's going to get the goal, but I, I think it hit his line mate's skate and went right off the boot. Troy Cousy with the goal. That's his 24th of the season. And as you mentioned, Lou, we may get a change on it, but that was a seeing-eye shot. Seemed to just find its way into the back of the net, and I'm not sure Butler still knows what happened. So Grand Rapids strikes first. And they're known as a slow-starting team in the... General consensus was they couldn't afford to get off to a slow start tonight against Rozo. Well, the fact that the last two times these clubs played, three of the first six shots apparently went in for Grand Rapids, and they jumped off to a big lead. They were leading the one time 4-1. Here comes Nielsen inside the line. It's stopped. Turning back comes Rozo. Shot directed at the goal, cut off by Retka. And now out on the right wing, it goes to Big Nielsen. Nielsen winds up, fires right on. Butler with the pad save. Cleared to the line, kept in by Nobbs. Here's Brian Nobbs centering it. Knocked away in a good play by Gunderson. Gunderson trying to get a face off. Fairchild trying to dig it free. Fairchild still after it. 
Tried to haul down Gunderson, and out comes Rozo. Gunderson, and it's called on the offside. 4.24 left first period. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. On the first period in an excellent skating hockey game. Rapids and Rozo. Matt Blade comes out at center, number 20 for Grand Rapids. His first shift of the game. Blade suffered a broken ankle earlier this year. Here's Lund with the shot, drifts it wide. Wensloff moves in. He directs it towards the net, cleared away. High stick knocked it down, but play continues as Rozo touches the puck. Gotsman puts it in front, backhanded to the line, and out comes Blade. Matt Blade down the right side, taken to the boards. Gallitz following up, there's Blade with it. He clears it around to the other side. Up with it for Rozo. Puck is loose. Gallitz with a shot. Beltier after it there. He's the big defenseman. Now centered out in front by Hallam and cleared away by Rozo. Bill Lund. Right wing pass. Gotsman can't control it. Lund goes after it. Taken to the boards by Hallam. Now it comes back to Dana Gunderson. Two Gundersons in the game. Dana's the senior, number 10, number 7 is Dale, and he is the sophomore and has had a strong tournament. Icing the call against Grand Rapids down to 321 left in the first period. Well, Rozo is still getting some territorial advantage, having control of that puck a little more in uh, Grand Rapids right now, but Grand Rapids doing a fine checking job. They have given up three scoring opportunities, but Houston made the save every one of them. They were from in close overall. Rapids doing an excellent checking job in all zones. They're using the body more than we've seen them use in this tournament, and the pace of the game is quicker than any we've had for the three days. We'll also find out how Rozo handles being behind. First time they've trailed in the tournament. Well, they were behind 3 nothing the last time they played Rapids and came back to make it a 4-3 game. They're going to have to do one better than that. Gunderson with the hit right in front of Lynn Ellingson, who's up on the bench as play is whistled down. Somewhat surprising the physicalness of this game compared to Rose's other two games. They are more physical at the outset in this game than they have been in the others. I don't know if knowing the players so much, the competitiveness between each of the clubs, or just knowing they've got to slow Rapids down because Rapids has got excellent speed as well up front. Lund, Headland, and Hansen against the Marinucci line. Ellingson said he wanted to keep the Marinucci line up against the Bill Lund line, but he doesn't get last change in the game, and Dean Blaze may be trying to change that now. Line matching always an interesting aspect of the game. Here's Cousy behind the goal. Man credited with the goal. There's the shot blocked as Retka wound up, but Dale Lund went down and blocked the shot. Line change now for the Rozo Rams. Fresh troops over the boards, and the puck cleared down the ice, and icing is the call against Grand Rapids. Retka trying a long lead pass to Marinucci, who was all the way down at the Rosal Blue Line, missed, and we'll have a icing as we look at Coach Ellingson. And very confident. Yesterday he was feeling a little under the weather, but he thought that win. He said, it's all we needed. Dean Blaze, who played 1968 tournament, first year coaching here after coaching the assistant coach at the University of North Dakota. There was a shot off the stick of McDonald that Houston got a piece of. Dana Dale Gunderson in the corner fighting for it. That's cleared around the boards by Worley and up ahead to Nielsen in the center ice zone. Here's a break for Fairchild. He's hauled down. Fairchild took a swipe at it. And now the defenseman grabs onto it, and play is whistled down. And it looked like Jamie Bufflin put his hand on it momentarily, and that is the argument being presented by Grand Rapids. Well, we just had the line of McDonald, Huglin, and Gunderson out there for Rozo against the second line of uh, Grand Rapids. And that line of McDonald's played great in the first game, and they didn't play as well yesterday. I'm sure that... They could be the key in this matchup because if they play the way they played in that first game, they had as many opportunities as anybody in the Rozo Club in the opening night win. And they started off very well here tonight. Right from the faceoff, Roy won the draw and got a shot on goal. Bill Lund behind the net against Fairchild. Lund up ahead to Gotsman. Great skating winger this time overskates the puck. Lund follows up and he steals. Bill Lund inside the zone finds Gotsman. Gotsman cleared to the left wing hoping Heights would be there, but he hadn't moved up on the play. At center ice, Gunderson 
And Lund, Lund loses to Nielsen. Here's Nielsen into the zone. On the backhand right on. Rebound, Butler, another save. Tested there. Two shots. First Nielsen, then Adam Roy. We've got a penalty coming up. And Gotsman was taken down, but this penalty is going, I believe, against the Rozo Ram. It'll be the interference called it. So Grand Rapids with the power play, the first power play on an interference call on Corey Howell. Here's the two opportunities, the first save on Nielsen, and the second one right here, Fairchild getting the rebound. Butler standing his ground again, making the save. Two more saves for Butler, who is real good at going down and getting back up quickly. Corey Howe in the penalty box. Grand Rapids power play, two for eight in the tournament. Rozo has killed five of seven. Kuzi's had a good night so far, and he's had a good tournament. He's out there in a the power play right now, moving up on the right side. Roy Kuzi and Nielsen. There's Marinucci. He mans the point. And it's Adam Roy. Kind of centered in front, went off the defenseman. That was a close call. Now comes back to Marinucci. Cross ice, and Worley can't keep it in the zone. One minute to go, first period, and a 1-0 lead for the Grand Rapids Indians. Left wing pass to Adam Roy, and Nielsen was knocked down in the center ice zone, and Marinucci will go back to set up. Marinucci hits the line, gets past Headland. Marinucci walking right in, shooting at Butler with a save as Marinucci was allowed right in on goal. Well, two of the Rozo forwards got caught in the neutral zone. As a matter of fact, their right wing fell down. Marinucci coming down it was a four on two, and he comes off the boards. He's got a good move to his four, and he cuts to the center of the ice around the defenseman. Watch this. So he's right on his four, and the defenseman goes down all alone. Two of them right there, but Butler makes a save and covers up on a rebound. Rozo has scored 16 shorthanded goals. Grand Rapids has never given up more than four goals in a game. It's a couple of interesting stats, these two clubs. You'd think that Rozo, with their 6.9 average, could get a lot of goals. Grand Rapids isn't giving them very much here thus far tonight. Here's Marinucci's shot from the point. The blocker on it by goaltender Butler in the corner. They try to center it out front. Kuzi is there, so is Fairchild. Brings it down. Fairchild's shot was blocked. Now Bill Lund flipping it out to center ice. Going after it's Gotsman. Gotsman moving in. Couldn't get a shot away. Gotsman bounced around there but stays after the puck with some good hustle. And now Brian Nobbs takes over. Clock ticking down in the first period as the puck slides into the Rozo end. And the Rams clear it. And that will do it for period. But our replays seem to indicate it went off the stick or skeet of Jeff Wilson. In any event, we are underway with the second period. The Indians go on the attack, and here is Nielsen to the line, and it's called on the offside. And Nielsen had to make that little move at the blue line to get away from Dana Gunderson, and it's all it took for his line mate to go offside. Otherwise, it would have been a three-on-one. Looking at the centerman, Chris Marinucci, he's got two, two assists against Anoka, but he's had a great season. When you look at overall scoring, 32 goals up there in the iron range, 36 assists. Iron range scoring champ. 24 seconds remaining in the minor penalty to Corey Howe of Rozo. Marinucci manning one point, and that's Marinucci. Check that. That puck's cleared in. Marinucci on the right point, and that's Marinucci with the puck on the far side. Kelly Fairchild was knocked down, and he's gone to the bench. That's Fairchild, number 12, and he has been shaken up as Rozo gets the puck down the ice. Gotsman and Lund are the penalty killers, and now Howe is back on the ice, so the two teams at full strength, and here's a chance. Gotsman scores! Howe just got back on the ice, or that would have been the 17th short-handed goal for Rozo. They always apply pressure whenever the puck goes down on the power play advantage team zone. And that time, Gotsman steals the puck from the defenseman of Grand Rapids right here, takes it away, wheels, and gets a shot right through the legs of Houston from 25 feet out. And there's Gotsman back on the board. Rozo, 1-1 tie with Rapids. And one of the leading players in the state. Probably as good a player as played in the state this year. Gotsman's having an outstanding tournament. And he ties the game at one. 
Chris Gotsman's father is the school principal at Roseau, and Gotsman scores his third of the tournament, and he is now the sixth player with three goals in this tournament. Unassisted, Chris Markstrom of Kennedy, Chris Heights of Roseau, Tony Trimborn of Kennedy, Derek Wynn of White Bear Lake, and Jason Rig Rigstad of White Bear Lake also with three goals. The leading goal scorer is Justin McHugh of Minnetonka. He had the hat trick this afternoon and has four goals in the tournament. So we've got a 1-1 game. It was Gotsman who scored to open last night's game 19 seconds in. Well, he waited till the second period and scored at the 42-second mark of period two in the championship game. Here's a shot from well out, wide of the mark. Bufflin clears it around the boards. On the near side, Headland in the corner. Adam Roy is poor checking, but this is Headland coming out with it. Another strapping winger, Headland inside the line, and it's called on the offside. When well, you're looking at Grand Rapids, the number one ranked team in the state. AP Paul. And there's Rosen right behind him. That's why it's so fitting that these two should meet in the championship game. Rams 25 and 2, Grand Rapids 26 and 1, and many of the people who were at their meeting earlier this season in February called it one of the best high school games they'd ever seen. And they say there was upwards of 60, 65 scouts in attendance at that game. Here's Earhart turning and just sending it out to center ice. Corey Howe with it there. Up ahead to McDonald. His pass for Gunderson doesn't get through. And back comes Grand Rapids. Cleared in by Hollum. Hollum gives chase. Howe gets there first. Earhart took his man down. Puck is loose. And now out with it comes Rozo. It's Huglin down the left wing. Dropped it. And David McDonald didn't see it coming. Cleared in by Dana Gunderson, and now the Indians bring it back out. Worley with a shot from well out. Corey Howe, back of the net for Dana Gunderson, back to Howe. Howe ahead on the right side. Dale Gunderson is checked. Howe will try it again. In the middle to Bill One. Up to Dale Gunderson, across the line. Takes his man out of the play. Back to get it, Brian Nobbs. Over to Retka. Clearing it ahead, and Marinucci can't catch up with it. Now he steals it. Here's Chris Marinucci coming in backhand. Butler got a piece of it. Wilson taken to the boards, and a lead pass for Heights goes behind the speedy winger. Heights gives chase. Here's Heights with a chance. Toe save, long rebound. He hit the goal post. And the shutout continues on Bill Lund, the state's leading goal scorer. And Houston had to make a great save on speedy Chris Heights, who steals that puck. He's so dangerous with his speed. First, Marinucci goes down the ice, and Grand Rapids had a great opportunity. Here it is right here. He's cutting in. He puts a backhand past the far pipe. Then that puck comes all the way down, and Chris Heights stealing the puck gets a good opportunity. Houston beats him, and the rebound right back to Billy Lund. And Billy had him beat on the backhand and hit the pipe. Houston is shaken up with the score. Rosa won, Grand Rapids won. This is Hockey 90. Zuffel would have been a shame if he was hurt. Looked like he pulled a muscle a little bit, but he's back on his feet and he seems to be okay. Certainly hope so. You see Heights breaking in, Heights making a move, getting the shot. He makes a save and he just reaches. And now when Billy Lund goes by him, puts it off the pipe. It seemed initially when he reached for Heights' shot, he might have twisted his leg a bit, but he's okay now. Score tied at one, 12.03 to go in the second. Rapids and Roseau, the State High School Hockey Championship. The backup goaltender for Grand Rapids, by the way, is Randy Erickson, a junior. He's 3-0 and on the year. But there's no doubt about it. The Indians want their number one guy in there. Houston's been a strong man in this tournament. Beltier. Watched by Gotsman. Gotsman takes him to the boards. Marinucci in to help out. Heights chops it back in the corner. Lund going after it. Tenacious four checking now. Gotsman on the near side. Comes back to the point, and Wensloff had trouble with it. Lost control of it. Now intercepted a pass as Wilson tried to send Marinucci away. It's offside. You don't see that happen very often. Rozo right now put the puck back in the zone, and they have been the best team at clearing the zone and getting back in on the delayed offside. Usually, they're flawless. They've been very good, exceptional. 
at getting that puck in the zone, getting out of the zone, and not causing any offside. That time, he jumped the gun just a little bit. Hi, Dana. Hi, Cork. Coach Dean Blaze looking on. Trying to become the first first-year coach to win the state tournament since Buzzy Christensen did it in 1980 with Grand Rapids. And another offside is called. Interesting the way some of these stats between Grand Rapids and Rozo intertwine. The only champion to win a quarterfinal and a semifinal in overtime was Rozo in 1961. And Grand Rapids is trying to do that tonight after overtime victories earlier in this tournament. Last time Grand Rapids won a championship, 1980. The team they beat in the first round was the Rozo Rams. Here's a shot going wide off the stick of Nielsen. Always dangerous, number 16, right winger Jeff Nielsen. Nielsen has it behind the net, being watched by Howe. Nielsen bumped to the boards, and the Rozo Rams are up with it. There's Retka hauling his man down. Brian Nobbs has it. Up ahead to Fairchild. Fairchild went off earlier in this period with an injury. He is back on the ice. Nielsen bumps his man. Third around. Headland couldn't reach it. It's Adam Roy with the steal. Roy taken out of the play by Howe and a centering pass. Broke it up, and here comes Headland. Down the ice with Hansen. Headland. Turnaround shot right on. Hansen is knocked down behind the goal. And here come the Grand Rapids Indians. Fairchild, a transfer student from Hibbing, clears it in. Jamie Bufflin fell down on the play and just was able to get it outside the line. Indians clear it back in. Ten minutes, 13 seconds to go. Second period, a 1-1 tie in the state championship game. Wenslaw, left wing pass. Huglin. With McDonald, Huglin fell down, and the Indians start back. Here's Wenslop taking his man out of the play, and a good defensive play by Bufflin. Tried to send away Gunderson, and he just couldn't catch up to it. Icing is the call. With the score, Rosa 1, Grand Rapids 1. This is Hockey 90, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Nine forty-nine to go in the second, tied at 1. Rosa will face off in their own zone. Their defense is way off to the left. We saw it today where Reeks did step right through in a face off like that. Untouched and scored a goal. Here comes Gotsman as he breaks out with Heights and Lund. Heights was knocked down on the play and Marinucci turns. Cousy and Wilson strolling down that right side, but icing is the call as the pass was just to stride too far. Marinucci saw both his line mates up ahead and he tried to hit him with an open pass. It would have been a two on one. A good chance for Grand Rapids, but the pass was just too far. Each of these clubs following through with their checks, playing their most physical game of the tournament against one another. Knowing that speed on the outside, if you don't slow it down, can beat you. They're making certain that they're not allowing their man to get away without getting hit. Edlund to take this face off, won it, but brought it back past Wenslop, who has to retreat into his own zone. Number nine, watched by Wilson. Marinucci for checking. Wenslop skated by the puck and Kuzi is after it. Up against the board, Brian Nobbs with the shot. That was blocked. Rebound right on. Butler just got a piece of it. Marinucci on the new, near side. Tries to center it. Marinucci's knocked down and Headland with a good move out to center ice. Big Headland shot off an ankle. Rolls in front. Headland goes after it. Edlund behind the goal, looking to center. He's checked the first time as that long reach is able to poke it free again. Back to Wenslop. There's the shot. Hit a skate in front. Now here's a shot from the other side. It goes wide of the mark. And now it's Retka clearing it down the ice. Kuzi gives chase. Icing waved off this time. And Bufflin gets back first. Bufflin up the left side. Ahead to Gunderson. To McDonald. Missed the pass. And offside is the call. 8.21 to go. Second period. A break in the action. And we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. 
Four and a half periods and just one goal difference so far. 4-3 win for Grand Rapids earlier this year. Tied at one here in the second. 8-21 to go. Rosa and Rapids for the championship. From the draw, the Indians control. Lead pass, and here's a break for Nielsen. Winding up, shot right on. Butler came out to challenge. Beltier clears it back in. Corey Howe out to center ice, and the Indians fire it right back. Butler out of the goal. Nielsen after it. Good collision there between Nielsen and Howe. Nielsen into the corner. Feeds it back to the point. Beltier cross ice. Whirly shot. Kicked by Butler. Lost it. And falls down on the puck. Close call there. Butler actually kicked faster than that shot was coming to him. He almost missed it. His leg had already shot out. He knew where the puck was. But the shot wasn't coming as hard. Watch this. You'll see the shot from Whirly. And his leg's going to be shot out. And he just caught it on the inside of his leg. And the puck stayed lodged in, in his pad for the faceoff. Almost went a little too far. But it's still tied at one. Rapids four checking real aggressively. Rozo not passing as well as he did in the first two games. Part of that because of the physicalness of the four check. Here's a chance at another shot right on Butler who covers up after being tested again. I think he likes wearing all that equipment. He's a catcher in baseball and an outstanding goaltender. Great reaction on that because that was just a whirl in the shot by Marinucci. Done all in one motion. He just got it down low. Butler is reacting like a catcher. He's grabbing everything. Marinucci on this faceoff. Some early movement. They'll do it over again. You see the way they line up now. Marinucci, he's got his hand turned over in his backhand so he can't step through. But there's no one there. If he would just push the puck through his legs, he'd be right in on Butler himself, the defenseman's way over to the right. You got to play defense first in your own, own zone. Take care of your own zone first. From the faceoff, Marinucci wins it back to Retka around the boards. Kuzi's in the corner after it. Watch by Heights, and it's Jamie Bufflin. Checked by Marinucci. Chris Marinucci turns, shot right on. Steered away by Butler. The rebound, though. Indians control. Back to Retka. Trying to set up the shot. Cross ice pass. Bufflin, nobody around him. He wants a faceoff, but well, the Indians just back off here. Buffalo could get into trouble. Well, now they kick it free. With a desperation play by the Rozo defenseman. There's a shot going wide of the mark. The Indians right now taking the play to the Rams. And this is the number one line for Rozo out. Bottled up. The Indians still have them all bottled up. Finally, it's just sent down the ice. Gotsman gives chase, but this will be icing against the Rams. 6.45 to play, a break in the action, and we'll be... Continuing to apply pressure, even though they're tied at one. They've got Rozo back on their heels. Rozo not moving the puck out of the zone nearly as well as they had early in the game. Todd Hedlund down the right wing, clears it in. Who? Houston missed that, and it didn't miss the net by much. Hedlund behind the goal, centers it out in front of shot. And that was close. Good play by Hedlund to center it out in front, and Dale one just didn't get good wood on it. Beltier, lead pass, and a good one to Hollum, out at center ice. Hollum hits the line, shot. Butler got his glove on it, Hollum follows up, tries to center again, and Butler couldn't get a whistle. He attempted to hold it against the side of the net, but it was knocked free. Corey Howe, off the board, stepping in is Worley, the shot knocked down. You can see right now the Indians controlling the play. Polo, back to the point it goes. Here's the shot, right on. Through traffic, and Butler got his stick on it. Now, hit on the play by Galatz. And finally, it's Gunderson working his way out for the Rams. Dana Gunderson has that sore hand, can't really play it in the offensive zone as well as he'd like to, and lost control of it. Now, Huglin is after it for Rozo with McDonald. Up it goes to Hollum, and he just deflects it down the ice and heads to the bench. Wholesale change for Grand Rapids with 5.14 left second period. 1-1 the score. And an offside call. There's a good indication of the problem Rozo's having. He had plenty of time to make a good pass. Rapids on a line change. Nobody really forechecking down deep that quickly. 
and an easy pass gets him out of the zone. But the initial outlet pass for Rozo defensemen this period has not been connecting. They're not giving their wings any kind of opportunity or a sentiment to come out of the zone with a clear control of that puck. There's another missed pass. Wensloff handed it away, and Nielsen has it now. Nielsen looking to center, but Wensloff, recovering nicely, blocked the pass. Up on the left wing, chopped out to center by Hugland. David McDonald goes after it. McDonald checking Fairchild, but up ahead it goes to Adam Roy. Bufflin had Roy tied up, and Hugland backhands it in. There's a pass for Fairchild. Up ahead it goes to Roy. Two on two break. Adam Roy taken to the boards nicely by Howe. Howe loses his stick, picks it up, and the Indians have possession of it. Steal by Nielsen. He spun around. The Rams have it with 420 to go. Second period. Here's a giveaway. And play whistled down. 414 remaining. Second period. Well, heavy checking by both sides. Every opportunity. Here you see one by Howe playing a good check on Adam Roy, who tried to break around the outside. Each of the clubs knowing that they've got to slow the other team down and the only way to do that is take the body when they're coming along that wall you get an opportunity you've got to take your man out neither club really that big up front uh, rosa's got two good sized wings and gotsman and headland both over six feet but that's it and marinucci at six feet nielsen on uh, Grand Rapids front line other than that everybody below six feet lund won that face off the shot doesn't get through and the Indians clear to center. Marinucci gives chase, can't reach it, but following up on the play, Kuzi knocks it in. At center ice, Retka ahead to Wilson. He's hit, but here's Marinucci. Shot through the goal crease. Just missed the far post. Indians send it back in, and Bill Lund goes back to get it. Still waiting for that Lund magic. Here's a giveaway by Gotsman, a shot right on. Butler the save on the shot by Cousy. Lund off the boards, kept in. There's the shot. Butler stuck out the glove and holds on with 3.32 to go. Breaking the action, and we'll be right back. Making a save on Heights, and then Billy Lund hit the pipe on the same exchange. Earhart with the weak shot that Butler handles. Uh, you're right, Rozo really has not applied a lot of pressure in this period, although they have the lone goal, and this game is tied at one. That bothers you sometimes when a goaltender gets no work. It's cold a little bit. I'm sure he'd like to have a few shots from far out just to get the feel of it again. Here's Todd Hedlund, that big right winger Lou was talking about, number 20, following up on the play. Hanson with the shot. There's Houston getting tested and coming up big. Loose puck, Dale Lund intercepts. Hanson takes a swipe at it. He's knocked down. And play whistled down. We've got a penalty coming up, and it will go against Beltier. Chris Beltier is headed off, and we'll see Rosa go on the power play. Well, the game tied at one, 3.07 to go, and Rosa getting the opportunity to pull ahead and we'll see how their power play operates. Grand Rapids really didn't have a very effective one against Rosa. In fact, Gotsman scored right at the end of it. So, uh, Rosa, a good special team club all year long. Rozo averaged over 40% on their power play during the season. One for five in the tournament. Grand Rapids has killed off six of seven shorthanded situations. Marinucci out to kill the penalty. Grand Rapids has outshot Rozo 9-4 so far in this second period. Here comes Gotsman, the goal scorer. Winds up, the shot is blocked by Brian Knobs, and he sends it down the ice. Nielsen in for checking. And Lund comes out with it. Here comes Bill Lund. Inside the zone, lost his balance. A weak shot. Gotsman follows in. And Nielsen chops it down the ice. One minute, 17 seconds to go in the man advantage. Here's the steal by Marinucci. Behind the goal. Kuzi's out in front. Marinucci just killing valuable seconds off the clock. Well, the great speed of Grand Rapids when they have Nielsen out there and Marinucci, they apply pressure. They play the same way Rosa's been playing in their penalty kill. They go deep and they bother the puck carrier. Occasionally they steal it as Marinucci did there and they kill a lot of time. 
Real good penalty kills by both teams. Very aggressive. They don't sit back and wait for you. They force you to make mistakes. If you're going to make a play, you're going to have to make a good one. You're going to have to make it quick because they use their speed to bother you. From the faceoff, close call there as Rozo lost the draw, and Adam Roy almost got a shot on goal. Now, puck chopped up over the glass, almost got one of the assistant coaches. See, when Rozo's trying a long pass like that, and you've got Rapids using their forwards deep, bothering people, and Rozo's wings are up so high, Rapids defensemen come right up on the wings, and they intercept that long pass. Rapids defensemen have a good sense of timing and anticipation to step in there and take that pass away, just as they do in the blue line when they try to come out of the zone. 45 seconds to go in the power play as Howe sends it in. Puck cleared off the boards to the line and out. And that's Adam Roy going after it. Here's a possible break for Roy trying to cut in and knock down hard as Hansen came back. A forward came back and did a great job defensively. Gunderson hands it right away and here's a breakaway for Roy. Adam Roy is in, lost control, and Butler sweeps it away, but Roy was dumped, and we've got a penalty coming up against Dana Gunderson. Gunderson's not too happy, and I don't blame him on that one. He had slid, the puck had already gone, Roy had taken the attempt, and then the legs went out from, from his body coming across. A bad line change, Roy gets away, but you'll see here, the puck's already lost. And when Gunderson went sliding to hit the puck, he missed the puck, and his momentum carried him over there. 17 seconds to go on Rozo's penalty, or on Rapids' penalty, and then they will have the power play because Gunderson is off at this time. What? He's up, still yelling at the official. He goes to down. One penalty's enough. He threw his stick when he got into the penalty box, and... He has to be careful about getting an extra minor penalty. 1.24 to go, second period. Indians win the draw. Good move there, and there's the shot right on by Marinucci. And Bill Lund starts back. Up ahead for Gotsman. Now Corey Howe sends it in the zone. Four skaters aside, lots of room. All of a sudden, Beltier's on the ice, and it's a man advantage situation for the Indians. Howe. Clears it. Here's Lund with a break. Bill Lund right in on goal. And a great save by Houston. He robs Lund again. Bill Lund was in cold. Now Fairchild for the Indian. Takes a look. Has time. Centers it. Nielsen took a swipe at it. Fairchild goes down. Lost his balance. I think the Indians felt there should have been a penalty. <laughs> no one was near him. He just fell on his own. Heights to Gotsman. Gotsman backhands it wide. This Rosal club should play shorthanded all night. This has been the most effective they've been all period. Here comes Nielsen. Under 20 seconds to go. Nielsen tried to snap that wrist shot. It was blocked. Wensloff can't clear it. It's Fairchild with the steal. Kuzi's in front. So is Nielsen. Now Nielsen with it. Takes a look at the clock and time is running out and that will do it for period number two. We're going to take a look at the frustration of the state's leading scorer, Bill Lund. Short-handed. They, des they deserve it. Indians in the latter stages of a power play here as Marinucci sets it up. Fairchild, he fanned on it, and it just went wide. Boy, he just got a piece of it. Nevertheless, it almost went in that far corner. Close call there. Howe gets it outside the line. Gunderson standing in the penalty box area, and he is back on the ice. Interesting comments from Scott Reynolds. We'll see if Fairchild winds up, and his shot's right on. Fairchild goes for the rebound. Here's a loose puck. Oh. Butler kicks out another one. Oh, he's sharp. That was a great save. That was a reaction save, and as good a reaction as he had, they had to be his best because that shot was in on him. Here's Heights moving in. There's a shot right on. Houston with the stop, and the Indians clear the rebound. Pass Gunderson, Marinucci. Here's Marinucci hitting the line. Two line mates with him. Marinucci's shot is blocked. Wilson against the boards. Behind the net it goes. They try to pass it out for Wilson. Wilson pinned against the boards by Wensloff. Now Adam Roy takes a look. Out in front, Butler stopping the pass with Wilson alone in front. Good play by the goaltender again. 
Here's a deflection going wide of the net. Good pressure by the Indians. They here appear to have more jump, perhaps that little extra depth in their lines they're using tonight. And icing is the call against Rozo. With the score, Rozo won, Grand Rapids won. This is Hockey 90, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. We're in love. I love it. You're addicted to love. Chris, Grand Rapids is all over him right now, and Rozo does look tired. And they're making bad line changes at the wrong time, and that's what happens when you're tired. Coach Dean Blaze will have to get control of the situation. He's headless scores! Todd Headland with a rocket from the right wing, and Rozo has its first lead of the game. That's the best way to relieve pressure. Todd Headland taking the feed on the far side. Let a low bullet go, beating goaltender Houston on the goal stick side. Taking a pass from London to center. Watch this. He gets a puck over in the side. And now from the far wing, hits one down low. And Hedlund from Bufflin and Hansen puts Rozo ahead after Rozo under a lot of pressure. One thing we were talking about their line changes. When they're going back into their zone, Grand Rapids was putting pressure on, and Rosal forwards were going and change line. Defensemen were caught down there on number three and four to two, and that was only saved by the heads-up play of Butler, who stopped some passes from coming out and made a couple of saves. Rosal's got to watch those line changes. Todd Hedlund's 16th goal of the year, his first of the tournament. Bufflin and Hanson, the assist, 156, the time of the goal. And the Rosa Rams, who looked like they were on the ropes, coming back with a knockout punch of their own. Two to one. Hedlund, a fine athlete, a quarterback for the Rosa football team, and he's going to Wisconsin, hoping to play hockey and baseball. High shot over the glass and out of play. He saw Hedlund, he looked up at that puck and he followed it right over the glass. He doesn't want to happen what happened to, or I mean Butler, what happened to that one that scored on him. Coming from the far wing, seemed to hit a skate and deflected over his head, over his shoulder, into the net. We look at the Rozo bench, probably feeling a lot better. Nothing cures tiredness like a lead. Scott's been on this face off against Marinucci. The Indians have been down in this tournament and fought their way back. Here comes Gotsman. With one and offside on the left wing was Heights. And Lund might have been offside, too. He had to really stretch to try and stay onside. Lund used, used his head, and he straddled that blue line as best he could. And he was stretching all five, nine of them. Looked like 6-1. But at the outside, Chris Heights coming with all that speed. He couldn't hold up, and he went offside before Gotsman got the blue line. Interesting, those records. Rozo hasn't been in many one-goal games this year. Grand Rapids, as you saw, 7-1, and one, and a couple of overtime victories already in this state tournament. It's tough for Rozo to be in many one-goal games. They scored almost seven a game, gave up 1.5. The last nine games, they had seven games where they only gave up one goal. Their only loss in one-goal games was to Grand Rapids. Here's Lund with the steal. Drops the pass. Gotsman's all tied up. Gotsman goes after it. There's Lund. Takes a hit from Brian Knobs. Heights clears it around. Behind the net, Lund is there. Trying to center it. Retka takes him to the board. Now Adam Roy turns for Grand Rapids. Indians have had the edge in play, but they're down on the scoreboard. And it's offside at the blue line. It seems to me like Dean Blaze has changed his forecheck now. He's got one guy going deep, and soon as Grand Rapids gets control, two of the wings are pulling back, so they got four men back. The crowd reacting. Gotsman was taken down behind the play after the whistle had blown. And although these two teams have a lot of friends on either side, the pressure of the moment is starting to heat up and temper's getting short. The competitive competitiveness of the game when the puck is dropped, friendships cease. 
Even your friends don't like to get body checked. <laughs> so when they hit you, you bounce, you bounce them back. Here's Gunderson. Can't get past the blue line, and back comes Fairchild. Kelly Fairchild in the zone. Takes a look, looking to center it, and then was really flattened by Howe. Fairchild up, though. 11 and a half minutes to go. Regulation time. Beltier keeps it in. Pinched in, and now one breaks out. Here's one looking for Hansen, and Roy turns the other way. Long shot. That was blocked at the defense. Here's a loose puck. Beltier moving in. He can't find it. Fairchild after it, and it comes outside the line. Corey Howe. Up ahead it goes. On the right wing, digging after it is Hansen. Brian Knob, senior defenseman. Handed it away, and here's a chance. Bufflin knocked down. Now back the other way. We've got a two-on-one. Inside the zone, there's a shot. Butler made the save. And the Butler continues to look sharp. Rozo clears it in with ten and a half minutes to go. Repka. Now it's Earhart inside the line. Earhart looking for that drop pass, and it failed to click. Back comes Rozo. And McDonald and Hugland couldn't get loose. There's Earhart again. He's checked at center ice, and it's dumped in by Gunderson. Bulls has tried three drop passes here tonight. None of them have worked. And with the lead, you don't want to be taking blind drop passes at the opposition's blue line, because if you turn that over, you're going to be in an outnumbered situation on the rush. This is shot by Lund, blocked at the defense, and cleared out to center ice. Fired back in. Beltier back to get it. Takes a hit from Lund. Out comes Grand Rapids. Marinucci tied up. Kuzi after it. Following up Beltier. Clears it into Rozo territory. And it's whistled down with the score. Rozo 2, Grand Rapids 1. This is Hockey 90, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Let's go, Tommy. Let's keep going, huh? Find out how far your money can go at TCF. Just open or add to any qualifying account, and you're eligible for low one-way airfares on Midway Airlines. Like $69 to Boston, $109 to the Bahamas. For the Rose in this period, the defense has got to get better moving that puck out of the zone, or they can be under tremendous pressure from this Rapids team. Puck comes back to Knobs at the point. He clears it down into the corner. That's Kuzi with it. Marinucci in front. There's a shot. Marinucci looking for the rebound. Back to Knobs. Clears it in the corner. Good pressure here by Wilson, Kuzi, and Marinucci. Wenslaw for Rozo. Gets it to the point. Kept in, however. Good hustle here. Wilson going after it. Bufflin takes a look. Trying to get a whistle. He is knocked down. Good hit there by Wilson. One of these Rozo defensemen might get a delay of game penalty if they aren't careful. Finally, play whistle down. You're right, Chris. They've got to play the puck, and that's exactly what Grand Rapids is complaining about right now. They're saying they're not moving that puck. They've got to get it going. The Rozo defensemen have got to get to the puck quicker, and they've got to move it quicker. The pressure they're under right now is not only causing them problems in the zone, it's getting them and their forwards tired, tired out because they're constantly getting hit. The quicker they get out of the zone, and once they get in the other zone, they can't have any hope or pass it to the middle. They have to know where they're putting that puck so it doesn't come out of the Grand Rapids zone so easily. Knobs at the point. He is checked, and now here comes David McDonald. Knobs recovers well defensively, and offside is the call. They have just announced the lineup for the maroon and gold high school all-star hockey series and 16 players who have been in the tournament have been named to the teams among the players named who are in action tonight dana gunderson chris gotsman todd headland chris heights and bill lund of rozo adam roy jeff nilson chris marinucci have been named from grand rapids so our congratulations to them and the other Players named to the Maroon and Gold All-Star Series. Eight minutes.
minutes, 20 seconds to go in the state championship game. It's a one-goal lead for the Roseau Rams. And this is where the presence of Jerome Butler is a key asset for the Rams, protecting the one-goal lead. Out comes Huglin. He takes a hit. Huck comes back to the point. Gunderson shot right on, and Chad Hewson holds on. Rosal doesn't mind seeing those whistles now. If they are as tired as Coach Dean Blaze said, the more whistles they get, the more rest they're going to get. Grand Rapids, on the other hand, would like to see this game going at the constant pace that it's been going at because they seem fresher. They've got more jump in their legs. They're down 2-1, to 7.59 to go, but they certainly have had the territorial edge in this game. There was a question about whether or not it's a disadvantage to play in the evening bracket because you've got six hours less rest time. Well, the stats don't indicate it. In fact, four of the last five champions have come from the night bracket. Here's Marinucci trying to dig it free, and it comes to Gotsman, breaking his heights. Great speed, number five. Gets it to Gotsman, turning on the speed of his own. Just lost control, and it goes to Lund. Lund out, puck is loose, Gotsman. Didn't get it in a shooting position, so passed off. There's a blast wide. Bufflin moves in. He directs it to the net, cleared away by the goaltender, Houston. There's a shot, and Houston dumps that into the corner. Pressure now by the Roseau Ram. One, he's checked. Bufflin shot right on. And Grand Rapids sends it out to center. Great side. Chopped in by Cousy. After it on the far side is David Hollum. Bufflin. A couple of goals last night. He's got an assist tonight, but here's Beltier walking in, hands it away to Galatz, and the shot steered easily aside by Butler. Galatz didn't have much on that shot. Beltier actually was in good shooting position, but he seemed to be wanting to pass it off. I guess when you're a big defenseman, you figure those forwards know what to do with it a little more than you do. Sometimes you get surprised being in such good scoring position when you're a defenseman. You say, I don't want it here. Here's one of my players. Give it to him. Here's Beltier now, starting from his own zone. Flips to center, and Corey Howe sends it back in. Worley off the boards for Holum. And he clears it down on Butler. Matt Blade back on the ice. He's been the 10th forward. Lynn Ellingson was referring to in this game. He wears number 20. So Blade takes another shift, piles up in the corner, and gets a faceoff with 5.59 to go. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota's been applying all night long. Roy Fairchild and Nielsen up front for the Indians as they look for the equalizer. Lead pass from Retka. Here's Fairchild losing possession, and Gotsman back in his own zone. Watched by Nielsen, 2.16s on the puck. Now comes back to Knob. Here's a shot right off. Butler lost the rebound. And play whistled down and some pushing in the goal crease. <laughs> Corey Howell doing the job he's got to do in front of the net. With that shot coming through, he just goes right to the wing to Jeff Nielsen and knocks him down. Jeff Nielsen trying to screen Butler and was doing a good job of it, but as the shot was coming, defenseman Howell knocked him down. Butler, very quick and alert. When that rebound came, he knocked it right away. Fairchild just ready to pounce on it on the left side. You look at Lynn Ellingson just checking the clock. Cliche, time is the enemy. They didn't use that one we gave him. They can use it now. <laughs> 5.30 to go in regulation time. Heights hauled down. Gets back up to four check. And here come the Indians. Tony Retka. Up ahead to Roy. That's broken up by Gunderson. Gunderson all tied up and he lost possession. Oh, there's a penalty coming up. And it was Bill Lund knocking down Kelly Fairchild. And Bill Lund goes for the penalty. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School. And Rosal can use his timeout as well. Rosal with one of their key penalty killers sitting in the box, that being Lund. Probably he'll start off with Heights and Gottsman, who do an outstanding job at it and very dangerous. At the same time, Rapids needing a goal to tie. They've got to get their power play operating more effectively than they had before. They were all right when they set up in the Rosal zone. They've had a great deal of problem coming up to that zone. 
A lot of pressure from the forwards and the quickness of the Rosal forwards on them. And they don't move the puck as smoothly as they should. They probably will look to Marinucci to bring it up ice, or at least get it far enough up where he can make a, a little soft pass and to one of his wings and have him carry it in deep so he can get control of his own. Big opportunity for Lane Ellingson's side with 5-10 to go. They are 2 for 10 on the power play in the tournament. Rozo have allowed two power play goals in nine shorthanded situations. One of them was a five on three late in the game and cost Jerome Butler a shutout. Todd Hedlund, who has the go ahead goal, takes the face off for Rozo. And Tom Worley back into his own zone for the Indians. Lost it. And that was close as Hansen almost stole. Worley behind his goal. Hands it off. And it's up to Nielsen. Jeff Nielsen slides it into the zone. Now goes across. Can't get it out. There's Marinucci with the flash just wide. Here's a pass in front again. Butler's down. And they're able to clear it. Actually hit the helmet of Hansen. State in the zone. Roy can't handle that puck off the boards, and it is now cleared by Hansen out to center and down the ice. And right in the slot area all alone was Nielsen, and no one saw him just previous to that. He had a wide open opportunity if they'd have got him the puck for Grand Rapids. Puck back at the point, kept in by Marinucci with 105 to go in the man advantage. Dale Gunderson gets it out to center, and Worley will have to set it up there. Lead pass for Nielsen. He hit the official with that puck. Gotsman to pick it up, and Gotsman gets it outside the line. Under four minutes to go in regulation time. 43 seconds left in the man advantage. Howe taken to the boards. Cousy moves in. Puck sent back to Marinucci. Chris Marinucci. Down into the corner for Adam Roy. He's taken down by Dana Gunderson. Dale Gunderson to the line and past Marinucci out to center. So the Gunderson brothers have the responsibility of killing the penalty offside the call on that long shot on goal. 21 seconds left in the Lund penalty. Down to 331 left in the game. Rosso again with that quality penalty kill not giving Rapids much of an opportunity. The clock wears down to 321 to go and Lund, Billy Lund, sitting out 21 more seconds. If Rosa can kill this penalty, it'll be an advantage for Rosa. The one thing they get when they're killing the penalty is the opportunity to ice the puck without having a whistle blow. And that does kill some time for him. Cleared in by Retka. And then set. Here's a chance. And a shot right on. Good save there as Hollum was almost handed a gift. Back to the point it goes. Knob shot goes wide of the mark. Earhart hustling after it. Dumps it in the corner. Hollum there. Clears it back, and now Lund is back on the ice, and the Rosa Rams have killed the penalty. Hedlund up ahead to Hansen, and he deflects it down the ice, and there is three minutes left. Indians lose the puck in their own zone, centered out in front. Knobs loves it back to the corner. Retka on the near side. Passes it ahead, and the Indians now. Trying to make something happen. Here's Hollum. And his pass intercepted by Gunderson. Ahead to Bill Lund. Lund winds up and the shot deflects over the glass. Out of play. Down to 2.32 left to go. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School. 